Now, if I ask you a question that what is schedulable? Is it threads or process? So your kernel or operating system do not schedule the processes, it schedule the threads. By schedule, I mean that how operating system decides that which thread to allocate which CPU for execution. So it is the thread which is a schedulable entity, it is not a process. So in the diagram you can see on the right hand side, I have drawn a block diagram of a computer system which is mainly divided into two parts the user space and kernel space. Kernel space is a space where your kernel or operating system is running, whereas in user space all your applications are running, right? Now let us suppose that in user space there is a user process P1. That user process P1 has two threads, that is the thread T1 and thread T2, right? Similarly there is another process P2 which has two more threads, let's say T3 and T4 right so now your kernel or operating system will going to schedule the threads t1 t2 t3 and t4 these four threads will compete for these three cpus which are attached to the system as hardware resources so remember the operating system sees threads as schedulable entity and not a process here the competition for cpu is between four threads that is t1 t2 t3 and t4 as I said in the beginning section of this course that thread is nothing but it is a basic unit of execution flow, right? And whatever is execution flow is supposed to be allocated CPU by the operating system for execution. However, the fact that operating system sees thread as a schedulable entity and not the process is violated in certain error conditions. The first error condition is that that for some reason if a thread commits some crime and it is segmentation fault, then it is the entire process which is terminated by the operating system, right? That is including all the threads of a process. So in this example, suppose the thread T1 do some illegal thing and, and it is given a segmentation fault signal by the operating system, then the entire process P1 will going to be terminated by the operating system right it simply means that the thread t2 pays the penalty for the crime which is committed by the thread t1 right similarly a signal is delivered per process and not per thread now if you don't have an idea about signals then it is better to understand this point when you study signals at a higher level let me explain that when the kernel space or operating system delivers the signal as then it is delivered, then the signal S is delivered at a process level and not at the thread level. One example of the signal S is segmentation fault signal. That is SIG, SEGV signal, right? Whenever the signal is delivered by the operating system to the process, the entire process is terminated with segmentation fault error. Similarly, when you have a multi-threaded program which is running and when you press Ctrl C, it is not one particular thread which is terminated, but the entire application is terminated, right? So when you press Ctrl C, the, the operating system delivers another type of signal to the process, which is called sig term signal, right? So here, what I'm trying to say is that signal is something which works at the process level and not at the thread level. Now remember that we discussed the race condition which is created when a new thread is created, right? So the race condition on thread creation is due to the fact that which thread the kernel chooses to allocate CPU, whether it's a parent thread or it's a child thread, right? So because of this indeterminism, the race condition is there. And the last point is that, that the kernel schedules threads on multiple CPUs as per the scheduling policy. You must have studied in your academics that there are various types of scheduling policy. For example, first come, first serve policy or shortest job, first scheduling policy, etc. Right? So as per this policy scheme, the kernel operating system chooses one thread among many which are competing for the CPU and allocates the CPU to that thread. Also note that in this diagram I have drawn three CPUs, right? So it means that your operating system has three CPUs on which 
it has to schedule all the live threads running in the system. It can choose thread T1 to run on CPU1 and it can choose thread T2 to run on CPU2 and it can choose thread T3 to run on CPU3 and so on, right? So all this theoretical concept will help you to understand the advanced features of multithreading which we will going to discuss in this course in the subsequent sections.